What can principals do? If they're expecting teachers to go out and do these certain things with their students, then what's our obligation and responsibility mm -hmm. to be able to provide that to teachers in terms of their growth and their professional uh, investment in what they're doing? What was it about TAP? that drew you to it as something you felt you wanted for your building? Need. Um, we uh, were working as hard as we knew how. Uh, we had uh, shown success. Uh, our teachers were working as hard as they knew. They were as conscientious as they possibly could be. They were teachers uh, of the heart and of the profession. But we, we had leveled out. We had plateaued. Uh, we had done everything that we needed to do. We were introduced to uh, TAP uh, by our district. You know, it's been six years, and it's made all the difference. Uh, it's, in, it's increased capacity, increased teacher effectiveness, uh, which in turn has improved student achievement. It's given us that structure, that vehicle, something very real and doable that we can do from year to year, day to day, week to week with all the realistic challenges of what goes on in a school, <laughs> the expected and, and, and the unexpected, this is a vehicle that, that we can drive <laughs> every day. Talk a little bit about the impact that you found in the past five or six years that you've had TAP. Uh, talk about the impact that it's had on your school, the teachers, and the students themselves. Well, you can look at the data, first of all, and everything that I can say is going to be backed up when you look at look at our growth, you know, over the last six years. We had a trajectory, growth trajectory prior to the implementation of, of TAP that showed sustained improvement. We plateaued. We implemented TAP. We continued that sustained improvement. We've gone from a staff that is less isolated, and we're more about collaboration, more collaborative. Um, our teachers, I've watched a transformation while they were already professionals, very much so. I think they see themselves uh, even more so today as the professionals that they are. They, I think they feel more professional, they feel better about what they're doing, and they know that they're uh, effective with it. What about your own growth? How have you grown as a principal in your role? Well, I. Uh, when I compare myself now uh, to uh, six years ago, I really did not completely understand uh, what I was looking for in a classroom observation. Uh, I, now I have a better grasp of that. <laughs> that helps in a lot of different ways as a principal. Uh, you know, it's constantly a challenge. Uh, it's been one of the most challenging things I think I've ever done as an educator, as a principal, but it's been substantive. It's been rewarding. I, I've heard it described that the leadership team meeting is sort of like the cluster, if you will, for masters, mentors, and administrators in terms of their own learning. Can, do you agree with that? How, how do you, how, can you elaborate on that a little bit? I do, yes, sir. You can have a master teacher where their area of expertise is math. You can have a master teacher where their area of expertise is social studies. You can have mentor teachers, their expertise is in other content areas. You can have administrators, obviously, with, with, the, with the same uh, makeup. When we all come together with a strategy, we can bring uh, our own expertise from those content areas into that strategy and say, how is this going to shape this strategy for this content area? for this teacher, for this classroom. Who's, so in that regard, it's cluster for all of us. It's support for all of us. Are you seeing the members of your leadership team, let's say masters and mentors and um, administrators, even yourself, do you see yourselves as growing in capacity or in proficiency because of those meetings? Oh, yes, sir. There's decisions that we've approached, changes that we needed to make, that we knew were going to make such a huge impact, we were almost afraid to make them. Mm -hmm. We needed each other, our expertise, our perspectives, our, the, the information, the feedback that we got back from our career teachers, the feedback, the information that we got from actually being in the classrooms. All of that needed to come together to make these decisions because we knew if we didn't make the best one or the right one, it was going to have negative consequences for kids 
and for teachers. So we have grown together, you know, uh, in real time as we've uh, as we've as we've done this job. In hearing you talk about the consistency, you know, with uh, obviously with uh, master teachers and mentor teachers, and not having a lot of turnover, do you feel like that's had have an impact on the consistency with which you're able to implement? And also the sort of helping with the resistance as well. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, most definitely. And being able to uh, have that continuity on, uh, among my teachers as a principal is just, uh, you know, is just is powerful. We have a support structure in place that we can bring new teachers in, support them, you know, get them up to speed more quickly than than before. Uh, I've had uh, teachers come out of college and said, you know, I, I really learned more, more this first year in TAF than I did four years in college. <laughs> so um, TAF has helped with uh, keeping a stable staff and has helping, helped in bringing new members on. Uh, what do you think is the most important professional characteristic of a principal in a TAF school? You have to practice distributive leadership in TAP. It can't be uh, top-down management. It can't be, you know, micromanagement. You have to empower those around you, okay? So with the distributive leadership aspect of it, you have to select and identify who's going to help you lead. If it's shared leadership, you're only as good as those leaders around you. And the most important decision made in TAP the master teachers. So I think you, you, you have to be able to manage uh, the distributive leadership model. You have to be able to share the responsibility. And I, every principal should believe this about their own, their own school. Every principal should believe this about their school that, you know, this is the best school around. Mm -hmm. You know. And I believe that I believe that about my teachers. Mm -hmm. I believe that about my kids. I believe in them. And I think there's <coughs> something for me, there was something always something special about this place from the beginning. I think TAP helped bring it out more, helped develop that capacity, that potential. So with all that said, and it's true about a lot of schools, I do believe that we really try to play, uh, try to pay attention to uh, the model, fidelity to the model. There's there's the components, there's the pieces, there's the parts, you know, and make sure that all those pieces are there. And if, if 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 something's missing, put it back. So I think that you know that we that, that's helped us uh, be successful. The principal can't be the end all be all. You know he's not the model of perfection. He needs to be the lead learner and have that team of people around him to where we can sort of interact with one another, provide those examples, and that you've got expertise at various levels and various content areas as well. I've seen over the country in the last several months and the last several years that we're actually seeing principals grow in their understanding of what their responsibility is and how they can provide that common growth for teachers in their buildings as well.